Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with MedNuggets. In today's video, we are going to solve a neurology question. So let's begin. Which of the following is the next best step in the management of this patient? A 55-year-old man is brought to the ED for the evaluation of progressively generalized headache that started suddenly two hours ago. He describes the pain as 10 out of 10. The pain is aggravated by lying down. The patient has vomited on his way to the ED. The patient has smoked one pack of cigarettes for the last 35 years. He does not drink alcohol or use recreational drugs. He appears lethargic. His temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, pulse 77, BP 165 by 80 and respiratory rate is 13. Pupils are equal and reactive. Extraocular movements are intact. There's no weakness or sensory loss. Reflexes are 2 plus throughout. Neck flexion causes worsening of pain. Which of the following is the next best step in the management of this patient? Right. Okay, so when a question asks you for the next best step in management or the next best step in diagnosis, you should never pick an invasive test as the answer. An invasive test is never going to be the next best step. It's always going to be a non-invasive test. That's the first point you need to remember, that you need to really drill into your brain, right? Okay, so now let's try to figure out what's going on with this patient, right? So a man is coming to the ED with a generalized headache that started suddenly two hours ago. So he has a headache and he has vomited. He's lethargic and neck flexion causes worsening of pain. Neck flexion causing worsening of pain is a meningeal sign. That means there's something in the brain that is irritating your meninges, right? So this sounds like what? A subarachnoid hemorrhage, isn't it? A patient coming with a headache, vomiting and meningeal signs sounds like a subarachnoid hemorrhage, right? So now let's start to exclude um, options. First option is EEG. EEG is a good test to do on a patient having a seizure. But then again, it's not the next best step to do on a patient having a seizure. If a patient is having a seizure, you must always do a head CT, a non-contrast non CT of the head to check if there are any lesions in the brain, right? So an EEG is, is not the answer here because this patient is not having any seizures. Seizures can occur as a result of a subarachnoid hemorrhage, right? Seizures can occur as a result of a subarachnoid hemorrhage, but this patient is not having any seizures at the moment. EEG is not the answer, right? Then lumbar puncture. This is definitely wrong because as I mentioned um, earlier, you an, an invasive test is never the next best step, right? Lumbar puncture is a good test to do. Say, for example, you do the initial screening test, right? You do the initial screening test for a subarachnoid hemorrhage and that came out negative but from this patient's presentation you definitely know that something is going on something like life-threatening is going on in this patient he's having headaches he's having vomiting so you know okay this patient might there's a strong suspicion of a brain bleed in this patient so even though the initial screening test is negative we can't let go of this patient in that case we can do a lumbar puncture to confirm if there's a subarachnoid hemorrhage in this patient. How can you confirm if there's a subarachnoid hemorrhage in this patient with a lumbar puncture? Because lumbar puncture would show red blood cells, right? So that's how you confirm uh, whether this patient is having a subarachnoid hemorrhage or not, right? So lumbar puncture is not the next best step. Then option C, MRI of the brain. MRI is a very good, it's a scan, so it's a non-invasive test. It's a good test, but MRIs are usually used to uh, diagnose things like multiple sclerosis. It's not a good test to, it's not a good next best test to um, find out if there's a brain bleed or not, right? Because it's a bit of a fancy test. We want to use um, something else as the next best step to um, find out if this is a brain bleed or not. There's a better test, a simpler one, which is. Um, Easy to do, right? 
so it's not MRI brain. Option D is CTA head. CTA is CT angiography of the head. CT angiography is an invasive test. So, it is not going to be the next best step in the management of this patient. This patient is having a subarachnoid hemorrhage, right? So, it's better to do a non-invasive test like a brain scan to confirm that this patient is having a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And once you confirm your suspicion, you can do a CT angiography of the head to locate the source of the bleed, to check where the aneurysm is, what caused um, this patient to bleed into his brain. So, CTA head is kind of a confirmatory test, not confirmatory. Actually, um, it can be used to find the etiology of the bleed, right? So, this wouldn't be the next best step. That leaves us with non-contrast CT head, which is the answer here. Uh, it's a non-invasive test, very easy to do, and it's the best um, next step in the management of uh, brain bleeds, right? So that brings us to the end of our video. If you have any questions, please make sure to drop a comment in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.